I'm a weaver and designer, and I work with recycled materials and repurposed materials. And I'm the fourth generation recycler. My father ran the local scrap metal yard, which he inherited. So I grew up looking at materials that people would discard and come up with different ways of using that material. In my work with Loom, we work it kind of in the same way. We talk to manufacturers about how we could use more recycled materials. We're working with biodegradable materials right now, which is very exciting. And we come up with concepts to either revitalize those fibers uh, and bring new life to them into products that we can offer uh, in the marketplace. On my personal weaving side, I have spent a long time collecting things that in abundance, and sadly, uh, there are a lot of mylar balloons out here on the beaches of Fire Island that I've, um, I collect and friends drop off, and I use that as the weft fiber for a number of art projects um, that I've made over the years. So now what I'm gonna show you is how to create your own lap loom out of any type of leftover boxes that you have in the house, and then how to use mylar balloons to weave your own wall hanging. These are the tools that you need to create a lap loom. A box that you can break down and make sturdy. Push pins. I like electrical tape. Masking tape will work too, but I like electrical tape. It has a little bit more gum to it. Packing twine for warping or, or any kind of yarn that you have. If you're a knitter, knitting yarn, anything that you'd like to use in the house. A pair of scissors, extra flaps from other cardboard boxes to create lee sticks, and these are your shuttles. I'm going to show you now how to construct a basic little lap loom from materials you have at home. I use push pins. I have push pins here in this in the, the house, so. Um, I use these push pins and um, I always put the, the pins in at an angle to, so that I can hold the warp yarn in. And basically what I realized when I was making this is I had to cut the top flaps off and I used that um, to create some thickness um, on both ends where the pins were. And I like to use electrical tape because I have it around the house and it's just easy and I love this because it has enough kind of gum in it to hold um, the push pins and uh, it just has a lot of strength. So this is, um, this is what you do to create your first um, lap loom at home. So the way that you want to um, warp the loom is you make a little knot and um, you start it at the end. So I like to make um, a little bit of a slip knot. So I put a little loop through and, and then I tighten it like that. Not too tight because you're gonna end up pulling it off at the end. So, and then I, um, at the end of that, I just create a knot there. And so you have that, and then you go down and around, and then you come up and go around the next needle. Do you see this? And then you go around again. And this is a fun project to get the kids involved with. Make sure your needles are in. Don't pull too tight, because you can pull the needles right out but don't keep it too loose. I like to talk about tension. This is like one of the things as a weaver that um, you realize is how much tension you hold in you 
<laughs> when you're warping or working with threads and stuff like that. So you go all the way. So now what I would do is I'll just put a knot and tie this on. I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. And voila. We need to do some finishing knots. And the reason you do finishing knots, I've already done um, the top portion. I'll now show you how to do the bottom portion. The reason we do finishing knots is so that once you pull this off of the loom that um, the whole weaving doesn't fall apart. It just depends on what you're putting in here. I like to use the same material um, that I'm warping with because it just keeps the continuity of it, but you can use whatever you want as well. Okay, so you go around the thread, in through the middle, and you pull it down, and then you repeat it. Again, around the thread, through the middle, and then repeat it. I'm right-handed, so I start from the left. If you're left-handed, then you would start from the right. All right, so then you continue on. One thing's really important is you don't make them too tight because if you decide halfway through this weaving that you want it to be done, then you can slide these up to where you want to finish and then you can pull the, the weaving off. Super great. Kind of push these up, get these kind of all orchestrated. The tension's good. All right, and you're ready to start weaving. I actually cut these from a, um, another box, a FedEx box, actually. These are used um, as your lee sticks. So um, let's just start with a classic um, tabby weave. So the tabby weave is, um, it's, um, the one, it's one up and one down. It's a it's a basic basket weave. So you go one up and one down and one up and one down and you're creating the first shed. You're gonna create a shed in which you can then put your materials through. This is what the shed looks like and you open the shed. I'm just preparing this to get ready um, to weave in the shed. And then, I don't have a lot of this, but let's just see how we'll use this. I may just use one strand at a time and kind of figure out where I wanna, wanna put that. So I like to keep, um, use this second one to do the opposite of what you've done before. You can see this here. So it's every other thread. So whatever was up here is now in the lower position here. So that's the weave structure. It's a plain, it's called a plain weave. So there you have it. The nice thing about having two of these lee sticks is that you don't have to do that every other time. And now you have this one that, that was in stationary. So we'll do a little bit of the plain weave and then we'll graduate to a basket weave. So on the end here, I like to go around the last, the warp end, just to make sure things are are in place and just to create a nice little selvage. Because there's a little black in there, I'm going to put in a feed in a little bit of black fiber in here. It's calling me. So 
Well, I've run out of a material on the balloon, so I want to show you the actual procedure of cutting. You could be doing this with blue jeans or, or anything uh, that you have is just cutting it into a long strand for weaving. Just creating a beautiful piece of art with detritus that would otherwise go in the landfill. And I don't know if you, any of you know, but mylar balloons will never biodegrade. They are poisonous. I think I'm going to go halfway in the with the plain weave and then I'll do the other half as a basket weave. So now I'm going to do the double weave. Okay? Uh, okay, so periodically you should uh, straighten out the warp strands. Just move them around a little bit. It's always good. It's kind of mid weaving at this point. Then I will adjust a little bit. Let's see the difference between the plain weave and the basket weave, bigger construction, smaller construction. So let's pull these threads down to close off this weaving. And then we can fix that and then turn it around and we can pull off these off of the pins. A lot of times the one at the very end is a little too tight and you get this pin voila. And you can always cut this, cut these ends off. This is the tail of the weft. And we have a pretty little weaving here. Let's straighten that up a bit. And there you go. So the next part of this is finding a sweet spot for your weaving. You put it right here. Look at how you get the luster from it. 